Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of our FM24 Managing Sunderland series. Now as you can see on screen I have dipped into the transfer market off camera just for a second there. I have attempted to sign and it looks like we're about to sign Ricky Jade Jones. Now we did actually buy this player on FIFA a few years ago on our career mode series. And I did see two or three people mentioned in the previous episode for me to go after him. There was also suggestions of another striker. But unfortunately, you know, after weighing it up, I just thought this one felt more right to me. Uh, Ricky J. Jones, he can play in the wing. He can also play as a striker. Only 20 years of age. We've managed to settle on a 300k uh, transfer fee. Well, it was 250k and it could eventually go up to 300k, which I think is a bargain. We still have loads left in our transfer budget, which we're going to leave anyway until January and see if we need anything else. But I think this, it just felt right, this signing. Ricky J. Jones, if you have a look... It's, it's his pace, man. We don't really have really quick players up top, or at least as a striker anyway. He's just a little bit different. He's six foot, so he's not tiny. You know, 14 to 20 acceleration. We'll obviously see this in full later on. Uh, jumping, 11 to 15. Pace is mental. 14 to 19 as a 20 year old, and that's gonna, only going to improve. That is fantastic. A flair player, his work rate as well, I really, really like. His finishing is the one that concerns me, as well as his first touch as well isn't absolutely outstanding but it's something that can improve i think if we chuck him up top i think he will do very very well here hopefully and he's also an option to use that wide if we need to so we are now going to confirm the signing of ricky j jones so now the title of the video is we signed a striker we did actually sign a striker and it came from one of your guys suggestions i always listen to you guys i've been reading up on a lot of your guys comments for uh, for help and suggestions and stuff so there we go that should be our one and only signing of this window so here are his final stats 17 acceleration 18 pace i love this so much his finishing isn't great it's only nine so it's pretty poor really first touch isn't great but again it's one of them where i just feel like he will grow with us is an excited young prospect who isn't far from first team level and half decent potential as well someone did ask to have a look at the squad as well in terms of uh in terms of just looking at the stats of our squad. So I will quickly have a little run through. So we have Pato here, of course. Loads of potential for Pato, as you can see. Pembele, again, is a regular starter. Pritchard, someone who's probably going to end up getting phased out a little bit this season, I won't lie to you guys. Rig, again, massive potential, as you can see. Roberts, already a good player. A little bit more potential as well. Roycin or Rusin, however you want to pronounce it. I'll just flick through it relatively quickly, just so you guys can pause it if you want to and have a look at any players um, because, of course, I've already seen all this, but i just seen the odd comment here and there that wanted to have a, a browse around the squad so you can have a look at your leisure, or leisure, should I say. Um, I'm not from America, I don't know why I said it like that. But there, Joe Bellingham as well, excellent potential. There's loads of these players in here. As I said at the beginning of the first episode, so many players have so much potential. Already so many young players. I just don't want to bring in another batch of youth on top of youth. It'd make no sense at all. I know that that's what KLD, our owner, wants to see. But I just feel like I need to give everyone a bit of an opportunity. And hopefully they'll just improve. And then by January, we'll see whereabouts we are. So this is our squad. Should be coming towards the end of it now. There we are. So that is the squad. Again, you can pause it at your at your leisure or leisure. Uh, <laughs> but there we go. We have signed Ricky Jade Jones, who I think has just been put into the under-21s. I will put him in the first team now. And now transfer deadline day has passed, and we have a massive, massive game to kick off the episode with. We're taking on Southampton. Oh, wait, sorry. We're at home against Southampton. They're currently top of the division they have got 100%, a 100% record so far. So this will be a really good test. I'd take a draw, personally. I'd take a draw from this game. And this is a lineup I'm going to be going with against Southampton. Patterson, Hume, Ballard, O'Neill, Sirkin, Equin, Neil, Roberts, Bellingham, Clark and Rusin starting up top in this one. Now, Ricky J. Jones will not be featuring in this game. I am going to slowly ease him in. I will bring him in over the next few games. I just thought with a team like Southampton, we'll just go sort of... As we know, our first starting eleven. Uh, of course, we will bring him in bit by bit. Bollard, Hume, please don't start doing that thing where we dominate across the back and then just pass it straight to an opposition player. I can feel that coming. It's happened plenty of times so far this season. Hopefully, it doesn't happen now. Here is Roberts. Come on, good football. We're keeping it neatly. It's nice football at the moment, but again, I can just feel. Like, we're going to just give them the ball and they're going to go straight up the other end and score. Oh, we're going to do that! 
What the what what the fuck was that? Jesus Christ, Pato man. I mean the pass was shit in itself, but Pato literally purposely removed himself from the situation. We were literally just dominating possession neatly, and I just could I could feel something was gonna happen. I could feel it, I said it. And we've passed it into the back of our own net. What the fuck are we doing here, man? Now what are they gonna to add to our misery here, Southampton? No, we're gonna win the ball back. Come on, man. Let's get an immediate equaliser to eradicate that absolute shite first goal. Well in, Paddy. Go on, son. Get the ball in. Help him out. Keep going. Keep going. It's still Patrick Roberts. Shoot, man. Shoot. Oh, and he's hit it wide. What a chance. Ball over the top. Fraser now is going to keep it in. A cross goal. It's beat everyone. 2-0. Absolute dog shit. Hey, come on, lads. The Southampton fans cheering every Southampton pass right now because they're starting to do what we did earlier on in the game but we just can't get the ball off them at all. No one's making a challenge. Did it even take a deflection? It looked like Patterson just dived completely out of the way of the ball. He's allergic to the football in this one, isn't he? Anthony Patterson between the sticks. This is humiliating at the stage of a lie. Roberts now. Is he going to go alone or is he going to give the ball? It's still Roberts. He's going alone. It is Roberts. Takes a deflection and goes in at the near post. Sneaks in. Whenever we're in trouble, Paddy Roberts just keeps taking the ball the length of the field. He's done it already a few times this season. He's done it again. Gives us a glimmer of hope to get back into this one. Great challenge there. And it is Equa now driving forward. Give the ball, man. It's wide of goal. He did have help with him. It's a good start to the second half. And it looks like it is going to end in a defeat. It has done. And I think, you know, we collapsed for a, for, for a period in that first half where we conceded three. But if you have a look at the stats, I know the most important stat is the goals. But we, we created more than enough chances against a very, very strong Southampton side. So it's annoying, you know, that we threw it away with that shy tone goal and we just seemed to collapse for a 20-minute period from then. But uh, other than that, I think we did play well. We made more than enough chances, as I say. So I'm not going to be too downbeat with that one. 3-1 though, Southampton. And that defeat does see a slip out of the top six. We're now in ninth. But it's so close already. It's only five games in. Not panicking already. Do you know what I mean? Now we do need to wait a couple of weeks through international duty. It'll give some of our players a rest anyway. Although we do have a good 12, 13 players on international duty. But now we are going to be returning from international duty. The international break. Should I say we're going to be taking on QPR. They're currently 23rd in the league. Which of course doesn't mean much. Because we keep losing against teams that are in the bottom half of the league but we are going to go with a couple of changes our sheesh will be replacing job because he did pick up a knock is uh he is back from injury but he's still a little bit way off full fitness and samido is going to be starting ahead of Royson or rusin however you want to pronounce it i will say rusin i think from now on um but it is going to be a good battle between uh, samido and rusin because none of them are really taking their chances you know to solidify their place within the within the squad as you will notice Ricky J Jones is going to be making his uh starting um or his first appearance from the bench I will bring him on later on but let's get into this one come on lads we need to get back to winning ways go out there and impress me boys let's have it QPR with a throw in here field pumps the ball in I think he should have tried to come and claim that part oh maybe oh dear Bad, bad start again. A really slow start. Not cutting out quick enough. Oh, sheesh now. Neil, good football. Come on. Have a crack, Equa. Have a crack. Go on. Oh, and it's high. Way over the bar. Mia, Sirkin. Oh, it's easily giving the ball away there. Come on, lads. Well done. We've got it back. Sirkin. Come on, let's try and make something here, lads. Help him out. Give it into Equa. There we go. Turn. Find your man. It is... Paddy Roberts, he knocks it across goal. Cleared away, Equa again. Go on, give it, give the ball. He does find clock, he hits it, and it's wide. We really need to start making the most of these chances. We saw it against Southampton, we had plenty of opportunities and only got the one. We're a goal down here, but we're doing really, really well. Dominating possession, making chances. Right on the stroke of half time here, but they're going to get one more chance. Here we go, and right on the stroke of half time. Actually passed. The allotted injury time. They make it 2-0. We're going through a bit of a bad patch here, aren't we? Half time. 
And Jesus Christ, we're really shooting ourselves in the foot here, making chances, not scoring, and conceding every fucking shot that's going against us. Come on. And I brought on a couple of subs. Huggins has come on because Trey Hume looked exhausted. And I brought off Hamia and Ricky Jade Jones is going to be making his first appearance for the club. Can he get his one back? Come on. Abdul Abar is going to come on. As is Jewison Bennett, who's got the ball now straight away after being brought on. It is Jewison Bennett. Go on, get a cross in. Tries to find out Sheesh at the back post. It's cleared away. Now they do counter now. QPR. Go on, nick it off him, man. Come on, it's too easy. Come on. Win the header. William Ballard. Ball now. The substitute who has come on. Neil. Ricky J. Jones. Can he still get the ball? Yes, he can. Help him out, man. Ah, oh, ignored the run of Jewison Bennett. But now he does get the ball. Bennett, can he get across goal? He can. Ricky J. Jones. And it's... Oh, my God. How the fuck have we not scored a goal here? Jewison Bennett now gets it in. Ricky J. Jones. Oh, fucking hell. There's that nine finishing. And a corner to QPR, of course. After a thoroughly dominant second half. Here comes 3-0. Oh, Jesus Christ, it nearly was an all. Sirkin with the corner. Can someone get ahead in it, please? Ricky J. Jones, strike it some, pulls it back to our sheesh and it's in. 2-1. Come on, a few moments left. Go for it, lads. I think this is going to be it, though. I think it's going to be it. It is 2-1. It's another defeat. Two defeats on the bounce. Is not great at all. Ricky J. Jones came on. He had a couple of really good opportunities. To be fair, at least he was creating them, whereas... Hamir and Rusin have been a little bit non-existent recently, so he might even get himself a start. He got a 7.5 anyway since coming on. Got himself an assist. Our sheesh as well. I think we just need to mix up that attack. It was getting a little bit stale with Clark on that left-hand side and then just chopping and changing between Hamir and Rusin. So I think this might be, well, with Roberts on one side, I think that might be our sort of final third for the next game, to be honest with you. Now, we do have a midweek game away from home against Blackburn, who were 8th. In the league, another difficult test. They all are difficult in the championship, but here's all the Tuesday fixtures. Are there any shocks on the card? Some big results, though. Southampton against Ipswich. Chef Wednesday battering Borough there. Swansea battering QPR. 4-0. There's a lot of big, big score lines, but can we get ourselves back to winning ways? I don't like losing, guys. I don't like losing. And it's only going to be a matter of time before I start Going apeshit at the players and then morale will be absolutely hitting the floor. And we have made a handful of changes for this one. Pembele replacing Hume because he keeps getting exhausted very, very quickly. So I think he needs a break. He needs a rest. So Pembele will be starting ahead of him. Ballard and Sealt will be the centre-back partnership. I feel at like 9 at times, a bit shaky. So I'm going to give Sealt a chance, you know, even if it is going to disrupt the, the, the bat line a little bit. I just feel like, you know, if... Certain players aren't playing to a certain level. I'm going to drop him. End of story. That's what's happening. Neil and Equa remain in the middle. Roberts, who is probably the only individual who's got himself an absolute definite place at the moment. Because he is so consistent on that right-hand side. Whenever we're shit, as I said earlier, he's dragging us forward single-handedly. Alshis is slightly winning the battle ahead of Job at the moment. Burnett, uh, Clark hasn't been fantastic, so he's going to replace him. He looked really bright coming on in last game. Same with Ricky J. Jones. We can only try, see if that works. Hopefully, hopefully we manage to get back to winning ways again. Or at least get this losing streak to a halt and get a point on the road. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Roberts with an early chance from the corner. Come on, let's get an early goal. Can we get an early goal? Please, come on, lads. It's cleared away, though. Now, sheesh. Is Roberts on side? I think... I thought he was off. It has been headed, and it's in! And it's Jewison Bennett with given an opportunity. I said he looked bright in the previous game, and he's proved me right in this one with a header. Get in! Pickering now gets the ball in the box. Headed. What a save that is. And then headed away. Great opportunity there for Blackburn to get an immediate equaliser. Roberts has apparently suffered a tight groin. I will put Clark on. Really don't want to do that. But sadly, Patterson apparently has a bruised hand. Jeez, I'm going to leave Pat on for a bit. He should be able to play through it, but I'm not risking Paddy Roberts. So Clark is going to come on, which is such a shame. But Clark will have to go on the right-hand side this time. Pembele, Alshish now. Come on, man. Neil Equa, help him. Ricky J. Jones. Equa again. Please don't lose it there. You can just see there's a... 
A row of Blackburn players waiting to counter-attack, so please don't mess it up now. Bollard, Neil, tries to find Clark, who's just come on, it is Clark! Yes, get in! It's 2-0 and Jack Clark, who's just come on! Come on, get in! Come on! Bollard makes a bit of an error there, and it's another great save from Patterson. Apparently has a bruised wrist. <laughs> it's fucking broken now. Gallagher, get it away, man, please, lads. Just defend, and it's another save. His hands came off. His hand has come off. Second half is underway. Can we see this one out or add to our current lead? Oh, sheesh now. Ricky J. Jones, well played there from Ricky J. Jones to Clark. Can you get the ball in the box? Yes, he can, and it's nodded. Wide of goal. Equa tries to find Bennett in again, and he's hit it wide. What an opportunity. These are the chances we need to be taking. I know we're 2-0 up, but we need to put them to bed. Pembele, who's done really well, to be fair. Clark, Equa, still Equa, it's blocked. What a chance again. Well in, Ballard. Get in, son. Go on. Jewison Bennett now. He doesn't have too much support, or does he? Yes, he does now. Anyone? Clark, back across goal line now. She's... Get in, it's finally. Strug, Jesus Christ. How oh, she's... Sometimes I hate the logic behind these players' heads in this game. How oh, she's there. Edge of the six box. Open goal. And he turns away and passes it to Clark. But either way, it's 3-0. Fucking hell, this game stresses me. They are so thick. The intelligence of the players is just non-existent sometimes. But we are 3 0 up, I won't complain too much. Blackburn's trying to pile on the pressure. I knew they would at some point in the game. They've already made a handful of really decent chances. Now here's Hayim on the left side. Get it away, man. Please, lads. Don't concede. A clean sheet would have been lovely and it nearly was taken by the Blackburn striker, saved by the post. Ricky J. Jones onto Job. Can he go alone here? Job! And it's over the bar. Brilliant football again from the lads. Five minutes added on. Can we see it out? 3 0 and a clean sheet would be very, very nice, very welcome. And what result this is going to be away from home? It is as well. What a way to get out of a little rut there. I know we lost a couple of games of the bounce, three games of the bounce if you include the cup game against Spurs, but to come away with a 3-0 win against Blackburn is a fantastic result. But now we are going to be welcoming Cardiff. We're going back to the stadium of light and have had to make a couple of changes due to fitness. Bollard, he was uh, absolutely exhausted, so I've had to welcome back Captain Luke O'Neill. Silt is going to remain within the side Clark, Alshish and Bennett are going to be the players behind Ricky J. Jones because those were the front, th sorry, the front four, should I say, who demolished Blackburn last time out and I need to reward him. As much as I'd like to start Roberts when Clark did replace Roberts in the last game, who was excellent on that right-hand side, it's only fair to give him another shot and another crack of the whip as well. Same with Ricky J. Jones. So hopefully this will be enough to see us get two wins on the bounce and at home as well. I know they've got the, the pacey Carl and Grant up top as well, so I've Make sure that our back line are going to be staying tight and close to him. Go get it away, lads. Go on, Dan. Get in there. Well in. Let's not lose the ball now. Of course, I knew that was going to happen. Pembele. Patterson. Come on. Let's build an attack. Let's not piss around with it. Okay, he's starting to piss around with it a little bit. And Seals picked up a knock, it looks like. So, I'll have to bring him off soon. Might have to bring on Ballard, who I was trying to give a break to. Circuit, though, now. Bennett, come on, let's drive forward, let's get another opportunity, Circuit now, go on, get it in, I can see Bennett making the run, in behind, get it across goal, get it across goal, oh, come on, man, and Ballard has come on to replace Seals, which is a massive shame, because he played really well in the game against Blackburn, of course, got the clean sheet, and now he's picked up a knock, and Ballard, who was absolutely exhausted anyway, he had to come on, because Triantis isn't in the matchday squad, and Clark is down, oh, please don't say it's a bad one, He's shaking about like there's no tomorrow, but he seems to be okay. Oh, she's knocks it off for Ricky J. Jones. Still Ricky J. Jones, shoot, man. It's Equa. Oh, she's, can he score? Yes, he can. Get in. Beautiful football. And we take the lead at the stage of a light. Come on. I thought Ricky J. Jones should have properly pulled the trigger, but I'm not asked anyway. He's getting really involved in these moves. Really, really well. Doing so well since coming in. Ricky J. Jones very much impressed me and a great suggestion from you guys in the comments of course that's a great challenge as well there is Bennett Ballard come on let's make it two let's make it two lads 
Onayan spreads the play to Sirkin. Trying to find Bennett. He's always getting in behind there, Bennett, isn't he? It's been excellent since we've been bringing him into the starting 11 as well. It's Sirkin. Can he get another ball in the box? He can. Towards Ricky J. Jones. He gets his first for the club. It's 3 0. And he is onside as well. I was just praising the lad. And he finally gets himself a goal in red and white. Come on. And there goes half time whistle. A pretty perfect half, I must say. Well done, lads. I'm not going to say I'm far from pleased. Well done in control of possession. And please create loads of chances and scoreboard reflexes that. Fantastic. I'll praise the lads. I'll praise him. Equa. Bennett. Knock it on, please. Or not. Equa. Should have released the ball quicker for Sirkin. He was making the running behind. Got a bit of space in the middle, though, now. Cardiff. Trying to break through us. It is Colin Grant, the danger man. And we get it away. Please, lads. Don't fuck around with it here. Let's get it away. Please don't mess around with it. Mate, you're in your own third. Clark, don't try that there. Now it is Carlin Grant. Across goal and nodded in. Or not hit in, should I say. It is offside though, I believe. It is, thank God. I spotted the lines were in there and we've already seen a handful of offside goals in this series so far. And half the time I can't find the linesman. So it ends up being a big shot. Good header. It is Abdullah Bar, the substitute. Onto Ricky J. Jones. Back to Ballard. Sirkin. Find him, find him, find him, find Dewey. It is Dewey. Get it in. It's calls for offside. It's Ricky J. Jones. Ah, oh, come on, man. Should have been two for him. Win had a well in Equa. Dan Neal, that's a poor pass. Not quite in the same wavelength as Paddy Roberts there, but Collins is breaking down the left. He's going for Colin Grant. He's found him. Gets it across goal. Easy as you like. And that one is onside. 2-1. Going to make this a nervy final few moments. Please, lads, don't throw this one away. We've been brilliant in this game, mostly. Five minutes added on, please lads, see it out, please see it out, please. Yes, there we go, we have got the victory at the stage of my life. Hard fought, but deserved on the whole, I think. Get in! And after that game, there's confirmation that uh, Silt is out between, well, two to three weeks, it's looking, which isn't great, out between 10 and 13 days if we leave to physio. I'll leave it to the physio, 10 to 13 days, that's not too bad. It did, he looked really decent as well, did see it when he did, come on. Such a shame that I just started to integrate him into the squad, started to play well and now he's injured. But there is the league table as it stands, eight games in, in the top six. That's just as good as we can ask for, I guess. And we're not a million miles off the top two either. And now to round off the month of September, we're going to be taking on Chef Wednesday away from home. A win here could see us propelled into the top two, at least for the time being. And this is the team we're going to go with, largely unchanged from the last out. And of course, we had to make the uh, the change of Ballard because of Seal getting injured. Uh, Clark is on that right-hand side again because Dewey has been fantastic on that left-hand side for the last couple of games. So he has knocked Clark off his spot, but then Clark did very, very well when Paddy Roberts had to come off injured. So it's all about form at the moment. If Clark starts playing poorly, of course, Roberts will be back in there. We know how good he actually is. And how Shishi's starting to solidify his space there at the moment with Joe Bellingham, his competition there. It's all about rotation, all about rotation. And it has been suggested that we tight Josh Windass uh, tightly, mark him tightly. So we will do that. And away we go. Can we round off September with another win? But they do have a chance immediately. And it is Buckley for Chef Wednesday. Please don't get a, an early goal conceded, lads. I'm not having this again. It has been struck and it's the early goal we just mentioned. I spoke it into existence. Less than two minutes in. 1-0 Chef Wednesday. They're absolutely dominating at the moment. Chef Wednesday. We're looking really, really off, off the pace here. It's Delgado now and it's 2-0. They're absolutely battering us. They've been absolutely all over us and it's thoroughly deserved. What an opportunity this game was. Of course, it's not over yet, but we have not started well whatsoever. Look, they are flying. We need to change something here, I think. Now, here is Ricky J. Jones getting at them with his pace. He needs support. Give it in, man. It is Clark. Is there anyone making any move in the middle? Oh, he's lost it far too easily there. Come on, Neil. Equa from distance. Can he strike it? It is Equa. Clark, get in. Is he on side? Yes, he is. 2-1. Come on, we've played piss poor, but we've got one back. We're back in this one. Dan Neal onto Ricky J. Jones. He's been so good, hasn't he, so far? It's Clark now. He's taken on his man. Getting cross goal. 
Yes, it is, Jewison Bennett getting some. He has been outstanding over the last three games. Jewison Bennett is actually taking clock spot on that left-hand side. He's getting assists, he's getting goals. Get in, Dewey. Love it, man. Ricky J. Jones. Oh, come on. It is Dewey. Is that a foul? Has a penalty been given? I think it has been. And it is Jack Clark who's missed a penalty this season and he's scored one. Come on, lad. Come on, Clark. Put us 3-2 in front. And he's in. Come on, Jack. Get in. 3-2. The comeback is complete, at least for the time being. We cannot stop there, lads. Come on. Daniel over the top for Ricky J. Jones. Go on, some. Take it all the way. He's took it a bit wide here. It's Daniel on the edge of the box. Jack Clark. It's in. It's 4-2. Jack Clark loves scoring against Chef Wednesday, doesn't he? He just fucking loves it, man. Get up. Oh, come on now. It's Johnson on this left side. Ball thumped in. It's headed. It's a great header. Jesus Christ. 20 minutes. Just under 20 minutes. Left. And it's 4-3. Oh, God, here we go. It's raining the stars, isn't it, this? Palmer now. Breaking down the left. Oh, come on. Not another one. Not another one. We've hooked it away only temporarily. It is Eor for the right back. Gets it across. Goal! Oh, fuck off, man. You just knew it was going to happen. As soon as they made it 4-2, I just knew it. It was, felt, I felt, it was almost as if the game just felt a bit too harsh on him. I thought, oh, they were 2-0 up. We can't let someone batter him now. 4 all. Fuck off. Oh, come on, man. Kill the game off. Four all. <laughs> what, what an utterly shite way <laughs> to end it then. 4-2. That should have been dead and buried. Absolutely dead and buried. You know, if you told me it was going to finish 4 all after that 2-0 start, I probably would have taken it. But because we were utterly dominating to make it 4-2 and then the two chances they got in the last 15, 20 minutes, they scored it. It's just a shit way to leave the game. We should have been winning that. Should have been winning that. And after the Saturday games were played, this is how the league table now looks. And this is where we're going to end the episode now that we have reached the end of September, heading into October in the next episode. Southampton currently flying at the top. We have Hull, Ipswich, Swansea, Leicester. And there we are, Sunderland, just about inside the playoffs, which is a decent place to be. That's kind of where we're aiming, isn't it? I know that our owner has pretty much said, you know, next couple of seasons, it's pretty much just top half finish, be self-sustainable. But top six is where I'm aiming for. That would be a brilliant, brilliant play. Of course, automatics would be great as well. But the playoffs is absolutely what we are looking to achieve. But that is going to be the end of the episode, guys. If you've enjoyed, smash that like button. I appreciate the support on this series, but it really does help when you do hit the like button. And of course, subscribe if you are watching and you're enjoying but you just haven't clicked that subscribe button yet. But either way, you guys take care and stay jammy.